let's talk about the stereotypes of what it means to be African. If you talk about black history or you know, African history, a few things come to mind. Slavery, oppression, um, racism, what have you. You know, these are the things that have been etched into our very existences. These are the things that seem to define who we are. And these are the things that people see when they meet us because that's what they've been exposed to. You know, that's why there's racism. They don't feel any worth because you are not projecting your worth. They don't know who you are because you're emulating them. You're basically mirroring their concepts, mirroring their identity. So, you know, they just see you as chef. So, like I said, you know, we mirror the Western culture without projecting our own. And once we don't project our culture, we, then we don't have an identity. Something I saw online, which was talking about language, which is very key to our heritage, and it's one of the things that actually identifies us as a people. Because language discloses cultural and historical meaning, the loss of language is a loss of all that links us to the past. Without a link to the past, people in a culture lose their sense of place, purpose, and path. One must know where one came from to know where one is going. The English language had penetrated our culture so much that even our languages, even the words in our, you know, our different languages have been kind of modernized and diffused, you know? Um, he gave me an example of a, uh, a word, you know, when they say trash, trash in Yoruba, uh, a lot of people know it as idoti, idoti, you know, but it was actually derived from the English word dirty. So that's not the actual word. The actual word is egbi. I hope I pronounced that right, because I didn't even know until yesterday. And I felt so ashamed of myself, and I went back to my hotel room and laid down on my bed. I started thinking of my life and what else I didn't know. So um, I grew up watching a lot of Indian movies, um, Chinese movies. You know, when you talk about the Sholes, um, Nagin, Mad, you know, and even the music, you, where, where, you know, where things are where evergreen. You know, if I start singing, my singing is very bad, uh, so forgive me, but I know that uh, there are some people who grew up on these things that will recognize uh, Johnny Man. You see, I didn't even need to go on. So, you, you know, these are things that we, we grew up on. There was something quite similar, and I kept watching, and it was because they were actually projecting their culture unapologetically. They did not... Uh, they did not care what you thought. This is who we are. Accept it. I also watched the movie um, Apocalypto by Mel Gibson. He made this movie, and it's based on the Mayan culture. And the whole movie was not in English. It was basically subtitled. But it was one of the most interesting movies I've ever watched. And I could understand it. And I learned a lot from it about the Mayan culture. So it felt like I was learning as I was watching, which was very interesting. So this is basically the Africa the world sees. Once uh, you say African, first thing that comes to mind is Nigerian prince, Skama, Boko Haram, kidnapping, Bob Risky. You know, so these are the things that basically they see. They, 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 they have no other choice but to accept what you've given them. You understand? The younger generation, they're basically adopting what they see on TV. You know, these generations, they get smarter by the day. And what they see, they soak up. And you can't blame them for adopting other cultures because they are not exposed to their own. We live in a religious society whereby we see culture as fetish. And as we turn our backs on our culture, other cultures will not look at us with respect. So what's the solution for cultural preservation? Um, I don't have all the answers, but I have tried my best to do what I can. Um, I'm an animator, so that's the tool I use. A carpenter will use a hammer, uh, a pastor will use a pulpit, you know? But what I have is what I can use. So in 2010, I, I was working on a project um, based on uh, the deity Shongu, which is quite popular. When I created this uh, artwork, it kind of took a life of its own. Everybody seemed to love it. 
It's spread all over the internet. If you Google Shongo Yoruba, this is one of the first images that comes up. It's used on blogs all over to talk about the Yoruba culture and history and all that. After, think, uh, and after working on this, I, I had to take it a step further, obviously, but I had to wait until you know, everything seemed right, the timing seemed right and all that. Um, I did some research on Shongo, and I realized that uh, he, he was, as, you know, of course, he was uh, basically you know, a Yoruba deity and all that, but then again, he was being worshipped and respected in other civilizations, you know, the Latin Americans, Cuba. But basically, it, it left our shores and people revered him, you know. So, and that means the culture was rich enough for them to appreciate. And then I also saw, noticed that if you look behind me, uh, Marvel and DC Comics featured Shongo in the 1980s and 90s as a character, as part of the Orishas. I think they were doing like the African Avengers or something. And... Um, Basically, he was featured in there. So, Shango has um, striking similarities to... Yes. He has uh, striking similarities. I don't want to say much about that, but... You know, if you don't do anything, they will do it for you. You understand? Shango is such uh, an interesting character, and they saw that. Of course, he was part of Norse mythology, but, you know, the way they packaged... Thor, you know, they packaged him in such a way that he seemed to be the only one. There's something I call the Black Excellence Movement that's happening right now. Um, you notice that uh, back in the day, uh, musician, you know, if you go to parties and all that, you listen to foreign music and blah, blah, blah. That was what was actually playing back in the time. Uh, but after a period of time, Nigerian music became mainstay. You know, you won't really hear any foreign mu music in clubs anymore. And it went out, you know, people appreciate it all over the world. Uh, most of our artists are, you know, touring the, touring the world, performing their songs to all sorts of crowds. You know, and it's been appreciated and they're being celebrated. Another example of uh, a notable person who is not really a friend of mine, but we've chatted a bit, because what he was doing was quite interesting. Um, Lao Lu, I don't know if some of you follow him too. He basically uh, is, uh, I would say, a conceptual artist. He, he paints on the human body. He calls it his canvas. You understand? And he calls this art, art form, this uh, sacred art of the Ori. Most of his work can now be seen on jackets, on you know, Nike sneakers, and all that, because people are now gravitating towards Africa. They're saturated with every other thing, and they're seeing that Africa is the next big thing. You know, it went as far as him having uh, a, a deal with Bulgari recently, whereby they made a limited edition scent of a perfume based on this sacred art of the Ori. Uh, Disney was not uh, also left out. Uh, they recently came to Africa. They met with uh, a South African company called Triggerfish Studios. So they met with them and they, they were trying to mine African stories. So they made it like a contest, submit your stories, and, you know, get the chance of it being a Disney movie and all that. Now, they also uh, worked on one of their most recent projects, too, Queen of uh, Katwe, or so, which is, you can see, as you can see what I'm saying, it's also an African tale, and this is Disney. This is another one, uh, Marvel Studios uh, working on uh, their Black Panther comic, they're turning it into a movie. It's really been celebrated all over the world. A lot of people are excited. So this is like just an Afrofuturism uh, project. Now there's another lady, Nedi Okorafo, who has been celebrated currently for being, uh, you know, she's been there and she's been behind the scenes for a while doing a lot of work, but she's recently been celebrated for her writing. And uh, Marvel also picked her up to work on the new series of Black Panther. And the reason why they did that is because they want more authenticity. Now, um, the project we're working on, or the project, yeah, we worked on and we're working on, um, is basically an origin story of Shongo. So we wanted to try and delve into that and have some creative license to go a little crazy with that while still staying true to the culture. In order to create these kind of things, there a lot of resources are required. I had to look for a solution because I couldn't employ hundreds of animators like, you know, the Disney's and the DreamWorks do. So I had to improvise.
I needed to get a motion capture system. And motion capture is basically um, an apparatus that you wear on your body and it records your motions. So basically you can translate that into, I don't want to go too technical, but you can translate that into a 3D character, an animated character. Now the reason why we're even going the route of animation and not just a regular feature film was because we could go as epic as we wanted and also we realized that it could cut across a lot of demographics. You know, um, there are a lot of old people who can appreciate animation, especially if the story is rich and mature. And, you know, the visuals also g grab the young ones. So rather than create a documentary or something, we had to create something entertaining and something that they kind of recognized over there globally. You understand? And once they see the visuals are similar to theirs, it hooks them. Then they now follow the story and see that the story is rich and it gets them more curious. We went about creating uh, the short film. We, it took about a year of planning and two months of execution. And by the time um, the two months was up, we had, you know, when I watched the, the thing for the first time, I had goosebumps because, you know, I, I realized that uh, we'd done something that was at least close to what I had in mind. Um, but we didn't know what the reception would be. Um, to our surprise, uh, once we let it out, um, it spread like wildfire. I had no control over what was going on anymore. Um, it started getting featured everywhere. And, um, you know, there were a lot of uh, forums where international, you know, people from all over the world were watching it and, uh, you know, appreciating it and sending me messages. And I was like, uh, are, you, are, you, are you sure you're okay with this? So like, yeah, yeah, that is, oh, they love it, they love it. I said, it's in Yoruba. They were like, that's evil, yeah, that's why they love it. Because, oh, okay, cool. So, you know, so what, what I feel is we are the ones actually hindering ourselves. These guys are ready for us. They are curious. This kind of proved it to me. And, you know, uh, we were everywhere. Of course, Nigeria loved it which was a bit expected, unexpected and expected, but, you know, we're very happy with what we, you know, what people were saying about it. Um, it was also nominated for a couple of film festival awards recently. Um, we haven't won yet, but fingers crossed. <laughs> fingers crossed. Um, and everybody seems to be gravitating towards it. These are just a few Flood, comments are flooded uh, Facebook. A lot of people saying, who cares about Game of Thrones when we have Shongo? And I was very humbled. I'm going to allow you to watch it. Baba, my family is not going to be able to do it. I'm going to be able to do it. I'm going to Momo, Baba, Moko, who left Baradini, Mobudom. Koburu, Mukareme. Don't see your be caught in Monto Dalola. So, I go see with that Bama. A little la Barapo. Woman, you see some of the people who make you sit to Oh, for you, you can't get a lot of money. 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 Sego. <laughs> Thank you.